Hi, my name is Robert Apino. This is for EDL 771, and I will be discussing inter-rater reliability in the article Assessing Social Presence in Asynchronous Text-Based Computer Conferencing. I found this article really fascinating. Uh, it is from 2001, so we have about 12 years from then until now, and uh, this has obviously changed quite a bit, but this is really, really great to have a foundation with it and actually be in an online course right now. So this article is about computer conferencing, the potentials instructionally, and the benefits of having access. Okay, they talked about uh, computer-mediated conferencing, or what they refer to as CMC, uh, for distance education, which would allow you to support high levels of responsive, intelligent interaction between teacher and students, but at the same time provide freedom of time zones and physical places to engage asynchronously. Okay, and I find this applicable and interesting because right now in our course, we're doing this. And perhaps the results of this research are kind of the reason why um, our course in Canvas, the way uh, Dr. Richardson teaches it, is largely based on some of this research which has come out in the last 10 years. So moving on, this study, uh, it was conducted by the University of Alberta. And the importance that they're looking at is, we'll get past the French here, okay, is to develop research methods that explore the nature of teacher and learning in these environments. And then they want to apply these tools in authentic contexts and use the results to develop instructional models that use these tech, this technology effectively. Okay, so they talk about social presence, and just to give us a definition first, is they call it the ability of learners to project themselves socially and effectively into a community of inquiry. So they looked at assessing social presence in computer conferences by looking through and analyzing the actual conference transcripts to what people would have posted back and forth, essentially. So in our course, we're posting this and then people are going to respond on it. So essentially, they would be looking at that sort of thing, how people are communicating in a course, in an asynchronous course. So um, they did use the community of inquiry model. And let's just kind of look at that right now. Maybe I can make that a little bit smaller so you can see the whole thing. Within the community of inquiry model, you've got social presence, cognitive presence, and teaching presence. So just so you know, that's there. They included um, coded selections, or yeah, selections of the transcript and the iterator reliability figures. Okay, so I'm going to kind of cruise down to that. They did use 12 different indicators it's using these indicators, and you can see them here. For example, expressions, the indicators expressions of emotions. Uh, they define it there. They give an example. Um, I just can't stop it when anybody out there. Okay, another one or two. Use of humor. They define it. And then the banana crop in Edmonton is looking good this year. Right, and we can kind of relate to a lot of those different um, sort of examples as well within our course. But so what they did is they uh, went through all of the all the different transcripts. There were rather really two big transcripts and transcoded them all. Others criticized the percentage of agreement estimates of iterator reliability on the grounds that they do not account for chance agreement among coders. Um, so they preferred Cohen's kappa instead. Uh, which is chance corrected measure. The calculation of Cohen's kappa requires a prior knowledge of the number of coding decisions to be made by the coders. Okay, and interestingly, the indicators such as complements, so complementing people doesn't, didn't really organize itself into a really neat syntactical package. So there wasn't really any identifiable sentences or paragraphs. So they did prefer in the end to report the coefficient of reliability figure recommended by Holsti. Here's just a, a sample of some of the text they would have had to code or they would have coded. Okay, so you, you're welcome to pause this and read it. Just to talk on the methodologies for a little bit, uh, they did use first class, which is uh, actually an email client and a conferencing system. Um, I think it was built in the 90s, and they used it as a conferencing system back and forth, okay, and they compiled the conferencing system and imported it into a qualitative analysis program, Atlas TI. The codes were entered into the qualitative analysis package, and then the three researchers worked together to code all of those different messages. 
noted that uh, transcript A contained approximately twice as many messages and four times as many words as transcript B because they looked at two different transcripts. Okay, just to talk numbers for a moment, one interesting thing that came out was humor, for example, it yielded the actual lowest inter-rater liability figure of 0.25. I like that they say their system applies equal weighting to each of the 12 indicators of social presence and it's likely that further research will reveal that each of the indicators defines social present differently. Okay, and then they also get into towards the end wondering if they need to review the indicators again. Although aggregate iterator reliability was high, it was not high for all indicators. The coding of the two indicators that were postulated to have an important influence on social presence the expression of emotions and the use of humor didn't really achieve acceptable levels of reliability. So there might be need there might need to be some refinement of the categories and their definitions, possible coding training, and some practice. Communication invariably influences coding towards higher agreement, and this lack of independence is likely to make data appear more reliable than they are. Okay, yet to code accurately in reliability categories as use of humor, it's necessary for coders to actually discuss their decisions, so they talk about how they might be able to do that. The authors conclude that the implication and benefits of assessing social presence are there, but further studies need to be conducted and perhaps machine analysis of transcripts as well. Which I, and then they also uh, they see the further need for more studies. Uh, and it would be interesting to look at other studies that have done this in the last 10 years, because again, this is from 2001. So what's been done between now and then? And I think that's where that'll, this will take me. So thanks for going through this and hope you get something out of this. Thanks.